I'm just an ordinary person like anyone else, but I have recovered from a brain hemorrhage. I come up here to do the thousand steps quite often, probably about once a week. It's the challenge of doing something that is normally quite difficult for me to do. Different ones used to say that I couldn't do it, but I've proved them wrong done the thousand steps now 61 times. It gives me more strength and determination. When I was young, I used to love horse riding and I used to work with the farrier in Moorabark and I used to go out with them shoeing the horses. When I left home, I went to live with a horse trainer chap down there, old Eric Blinden. He had a riding school down near Johnson's Pottery there. And I used to ride the horses and we used to teach the kids riding. I've fallen off, I forget how many times. <laughs> but it was all good training, you see. I used to cut people's lawns all the time, cut down the trees they didn't need. That was something else I used to love doing. I used to look after people that weren't very well, especially one in Upway did all the plumbing on his house. Fixed up an old chip bath heater and I used to run a bath for him when he was getting quite old. How you going? And I used to cook meals for him. I had a little port of gas stove that I kept there at his house. But he had no electricity, you see. He didn't have many friends, but his relatives didn't like me. They thought I was trying to take something from him, you know. They didn't realise I was just trying to respect him. And at the funeral, they told me to get lost, boarded up all the house so that I couldn't get back into the place. But I left all my stuff there, stove and gas bottle and everything that I used to cook his meals on. That's why I do my heart check back there, just to make sure my heart's still beating. <laughs> my biggest passion is serving other people. I love helping people and I used to look after an epileptic for quite a few years. He used to come with me when I used to do my tree lobbing. And when I was doing my plumbing, he used to come with me and he was very loyal, Michael. He'd walk two miles up the road just to get me a drink from the milk bar. He was a really good friend. But then I was always a, a good friend to him as well. But people used to laugh at me because I spent so much time with Michael. They used to make fun of him because he used to talk about John Wayne and being a cowboy and he used to carve leather belts, but I don't have any of his belts left now because all that stuff got taken when I lost all my stuff. 
I kept a lot of stuff of his after I found him dead one day. Michael was a really wonderful person. When I was very young, we used to go to Sunday school and I remember the first thing I ever learned, that God is love. He loved us first. Everything comes from that. But along the way, as I grew up, I rejected those things for a long while and I went astray. A life of sin takes over because it's the sin that controls you. Years ago I used to watch and look at a lot of pornography and stuff like that, but I've thrown all those things aside. They have no interest to me at all anymore. I know God's grace covers a multitude of sins. I think he's really transformed my life. It's only through Jesus that we're saved. You see, Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood so that we could be forgiven of all our wrongdoings during our life. That really is the most important thing I've learned through all my life, is to surrender to the Lord and ask him for forgiveness. God created the world, the universe, and everything that's in the world. It's God's creation. Insects, the birds, the animals. We are his creation. Yes, well, the little church I go to, it's a place where other people with the same beliefs go to. What bit of knowledge would you like to You've really got something in common. He saved my life when I had the brain hemorrhage. He kept me going because I should really be dead. But by his grace, he's kept me alive for some strange reason. Maybe to inspire other people a little bit because of my strength and determination to try and encourage other people to do likewise. A bit dirty today. <laughs> oh, normally I go down this way. I walk down in the loose gravel, and that's a lot harder. It's better to do it the hard way. It makes you stronger and keeps you more determined. I've read it many times in the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. I might head back down again now.
Brian, what do you think you'll say to Jesus when you meet him? I'd fall down at his feet and I'd ask his forgiveness for all my sins. I'm sure he would say, come my loyal and faithful servant, there's a place prepared for you. In my kingdom. Lovely.